So welcome to the first lecture of today. Um, the gentleman here goes by the name of Matthias Aguayo, has been working on and with music since the 90s, uh, was born in Santiago de Chile, grew up in Santiago de Gumasbach, <laughs> near Cologne. Um, his biography is as idiosyncratic as the music he tends to make, which ranges from um, very delicate uh, electronic love songs to heavy rhythmic patterns. And yeah, we will hear about that now. Please give him a very warm welcome. <laughs> So, Matthias, before we hear one of your songs or tracks, uh, can you run us through your interesting biography a little bit? With How did you come up from uh, Santiago de Chile to Cologne? Well, um, as many of the Chilean people who live in Europe or Chilean descendants, uh, we have a Chilean descendancy. I'm, I'm, I was born in Chile, in Santiago, and my parents had to leave the country because of political reasons. So it was uh, they were exiled in Germany. That's why I grew up um, a big part of my life in Germany, though nevertheless I lived uh, also in Peru and in Argentina and later in France. But I think... Um, the place where I spent the longest time in my life continuously was definitely uh, Cologne in Germany. And that's also where you started to get interested in music, Cologne. Um, no, not really, because I was uh, always doing music or related to music somehow. And um, But in, in Cologne there was the possibility of... of um, of of really doing it in a way that somebody would listen to it and to get involved in in a context of people interested into music, uh, in music, I see um, a lot of uh, continuity in my life. Considering the the process of music making, I see especially continuity in the idea of recording, because um, I had like this small uh, boombox uh, when I was a child and I could record with it. And once I realized that there's the possibility of recording. Um, I think there is a little bit where everything started. And how old were you then when you came to Cologne? I, uh, I know, when I came to Cologne, I was uh, a teenager. Yeah. Ah, already. So yeah, yeah. maybe you can uh, talk us through the music scene that you found there. Yes, um, so that was the 90s, and it was a very active music scene, and it was uh, very revolutionary for us at that moment and um, um, we're talking about what genre house music <laughs> and um, we're talking about also like um, all these people who a lot of them are still today doing music and um, uh, at that time in a less organized way but but until i mean until the day of today the people i do collaborate with on the one hand uh, the people of compact in cologne which were already in a music context at that times um uh well it was not uh, called compact yet um these people or but also people who are um, are participating in comeme in the label uh, we're doing now um, uh, such as uh, Christian S. So um, there is a, a long story there. And I think, well, my, one can say that it maybe starts in Cologne. Yeah. And you mentioned Compact. And uh, when you got to Cologne, they were still working at the record shop called Delirium, probably, yes. right? Yeah. So maybe for people who are not familiar with Compact, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, Compact is uh, a label that, yeah, it started with this de Delirium record. Um, um, well, I think the, the most important people or, 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 or names that come to my mind is obviously Mike Ink, Wolfgang Vogt, uh, Michael Meyer, and they <coughs> were releasing already at, at, at releasing already at the times that there was this um, Delirium Records in Cologne. They were already uh, releasing music um, on different smaller labels. Um, they were doing themselves, like Profan, 
and stuff. And um, this was something that was soon um, associated to an idea of something like a, a sound of Cologne, uh, which was a certain groove, a certain rhythm. And I think this is also, it, it, it w would be called very soon minimalism, but I think it's um, that 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 it's uh, a bit of a mistake. It's it's more like the idea that people in Cologne, with their means, was trying to do house music, but the result was something else because obviously they they didn't have the same uh, musical education and background and so on. So um, the and in all this um, thing, there was always a lot of fun and al also uh, an idea of of romanticism or pop or something in 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 this in this context of uh, musicians so um it was called shuffle techno also right yeah it was called shuffle techno but um i think that's a little bit uh, misunderstanding i would call it boogie because it's dunk chunk dunk chunk dunk no and uh, the 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 shuffle it's also a shuffle in a way but um well but that's another topic it's not so interesting maybe but um in this context i um this was the context where i came to cologne and i heard dj's like michael Meyer, who at that time were playing a lot of um DJ Pierre like wild pitch um, house music, and this is um, this is where I found like everything together like like in in this music in techno music or house music the possibility to as ha as having this background as being an alien like coming from somewhere else but growing up there speaking two languages and not fully belonging here but not fully belonging there so so I think for for um, the displaced people. In a way, um, techno music or electronic music was a very good place to be because um, the backgrounds, the context, and everything were were less clear, and it was more open. And also because it had less vocals and messages in a way. Yeah, but also I think because it combined something that before was not combined in a way, which was the groove. That is something that we grow up with when you come from Latin America, and on the other hand, the electronics, the modernism, and all that, these two things at the same time, the new wavy darkness with the celebration, no? All this, this, um, this thing um, are things that one, one, one has inside, and, and in a way were not, there was not a possibility to have both at the same time. I, that's an impression I got. So it was um, a very good moment. And um, yeah, and in the context of uh, of Cologne, um, we started together with a, a friend called Dirk Lias. We started this uh, project, um, Closer Music, and um, that was end of the nineties. And um, obviously, the sound we did was not the typical, um, or, or what at that day uh, was associated with the typical Cologne sound. Um, whereas I never thought like of the possibility that we could really release it on on compact, but I played it to them so they could maybe give me an idea where to release it. But they liked it very much, and it was also like the first um, 12 inch that didn't have like this this dots. It was not like this um, compact as I had at that times like a very straight kind of minimal line of, of a little bit more serious in a way music and and the design was also like very standardized but we did something completely different and uh, that was the beginning of um, I think of getting heard in a way and was it on purpose that you didn't do a compact dot record no we actually w we had everything I mean we I wanted we as uh, Dirk and me we wanted to do this record with the astronaut on top and whatever and with all this we came this is what we want where can we do it and then Michael said you can do it on compact and I was like mm, really but uh, yeah that's let's how it starts let's hear it yeah I think it's here right I'm floating free, I'm floating free. 
the stars between the stars between the stars between the stars between the stars there is no matter day no matter day no matter day no matter day no planet e is far away is far away is far away is far away where i am is where i stay is where i stay is where i stay is where i stay I won't return, I'm here to say, I'm here to say, I'm here to say, I'm here to say. Floating free. One, two, three. Eternally. No grand. Then later comes here. Thank you very much. Well, the nice guitar part of Dirk is uh, comes a little bit later, but well, um, this track we recorded um, it was very funny how we recorded it because we recorded it with um, two uh, Commodore Amigas, um, <laughs> and each one on the program that we were using was a program called uh, Sonics. And um, each uh, program had like the um, possibility of only four tracks. So if we would have two Commodore Amigas, we would have eight tracks. And um, and apart from that, we didn't have a like um, hard disk recording system or something. So we had to record all in one take because Dirk is playing the guitar, as you heard, and I'm singing. But and also we couldn't use the delays at the same time because there was only one effect which we used for Dirk, and I had to sing the delay myself because I had no effect on my voice. So um, actually, um, st until today, I think uh, like reducing a little bit the possibilities of how you work is al also something very, it's always has something very um, stimulating for the creative process. I think that um, especially when we're doing like electronic music um, production, I think the, um, all these technical possibilities, well, they're called possibilities, but in a way, 
um, they sometimes can keep us a little bit far from the idea of really um, expressing ourselves because they become obstacles. So suddenly you can start concentrating in details, whereas the main idea, which I think is the, the most important uh, uh, thing, uh, gets lost a little bit. So you don't collect a lot of vintage drum machines and modular synth systems and reel-to-reel -reel tapes? No, no, not so much. I mean, I have some stuff, but um, I think it's also possible. But I think uh, it's it's very interesting. It's important to focus somehow. I mean, if you have that stuff, you can also focus on that stuff. But, um, but I think... Um, um, if we jump now more to, to a recent work, which is um, uh, my album Ayayay, Ay Ay, which, which you uh, I, will, I will give some examples there, I did everything, or almost everything, with my voice, which was also not not, um, not a conceptual thing, but more a thing of um, what, uh, w how, how do I want to work? What setup uh, can I work with in the sense that I can get... Uh, um, the less, uh, the make the way as short as possible between the inspiration and the idea and uh, the final result somehow. So when you say you did a lot of it with your voice, that mm -hmm. includes rhythms and mm -hmm. bass lines, and mm -hmm. how did you do that? Just record certain noises and... and yeah, I think... Um, for instance, uh, there's not a, an instrument that I really play well. I would consider myself a singer, and th that's my best instrument. So, um, so for me, it was much more easy. I mean, when I have the idea for a bass line or a rhythm, I think the easiest for me would be to sing it, first of all. And then um, also, I think uh, when when I play a keyboard, it's not so good. It's uh, I, it becomes too much cliche. When I sing it, it's a little bit more original. So I prefer to develop melodies and and, and harmonies and everything more with my voice. What then what sometimes I what I do is to replace it. No, like to say, okay, I will replace this bass line I was singing by by a synth bass line or something. Um, uh, but. But for me, the easiest thing is to develop things like that because this is something I think one should always focus a little bit on what, on the skills that one has, and and I think um, I have them more in in singing than in in playing. Or uh, what did you mean by piano cliche when you play the keys? <laughs> I don't know. I I I don't. Um, it's not. Um, it's not. It doesn't get to. Uh, I don't know. I I, I play. I, I don't play good. <laughs> um, do you maybe because we were just talking about it? Show us something quickly from the I I I album. Ah, okay. Then that yeah. Um, wait a second. So. Yeah, no, sit, sit, sit. 
And I, I play a little bit of another one so you have another idea of it. Okay, just another example of um, ay ay ay. Thank you very much. So um, this is again very different for a label like Compact. Okay. Right? Yeah, and it's also quite a change because we jumped now like ten years or something. So um, yeah, I I don't know. I th uh, with Compact it's a very special relationship because um, they they have always given me all the possible liberty to do whatever I like, so obviously it's not a very typical uh, record for a German um, electronic music uh, label. So that's important for an artist, that you w can you work with a label over a long period of time and they trust you, you trust yes. them? I think, I think there's the, this continuity of working with, with one team, for me at least it was super good, because this is people that I can fully trust, it's family. So even if musically I'm, I'm, I'm in a weird position there, um, I think it's, it's very helpful because, uh, well, first of all, it's people I appreciate a lot because they, they were always very, very helpful and very straightforward. And, um, and also, yeah, it's, it's trust in common. They also trust me in my decisions, whatever they are. And, um, and obviously, when I when I sent them this record, it was like some weeks of silence. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we will do it. But um, yeah, so th they they were a bit shocked about it. But um, on the other hand, they also trusted me that that there's a reason why I'm doing it that way. So, and this I also think is possible because I've worked f uh, with them so long. So they they also have uh, 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 gained uh, this this con confidence. And you spoke about the jump of 10 years between Closer mm. Musik 1, 2, 3, No Gravity and your III album. What happened in those 10 years for you? Like Closer Music folded as a project, right? You yeah, um, Closer Music, we did uh, some, some other tracks mm. and uh, we toured a lot together. But as you know, you know how it, how it is with bands. When you're, when you're playing so much together, at some point also you develop into artistically also into different directions and whatever so this project stopped at some point and then the, um, um, I think um, there's um, there's a lot of musical story and a lot of musical background to tell there's all this time in Cologne also after Closer Music where Christian S and, and I did these lost parties that were very important for our musical development why being resident DJs why were they called lost? Um, because um, I don't remember. <laughs> um, it was um, why were they called lost? Ah, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, actually, it had a little bit to do also with the fact that um, that all this music thing became a little bit more professionalized, and then they suddenly, suddenly there was like um, all, all these genres that we didn't like. We were there was a little bit of unsatisfaction actually with the music that was surrounding us um, because it was becoming it it was losing the groove that we 
That was one of the reasons why we liked it. It was losing also the craziness. And um, so nowadays, um, or at that point, um, electronic music s started to sound a little bit more normal, a little bit more standardized. And our parties was we were like a little bit lost in that context. So also when I did the album Are You Really Lost? That is very much uh, related to, to, to this period. It was also dedicated to all these very talented people who didn't have so much luck in their things because suddenly there was like um, all these new, very geeky people with a lot of ambitions and a lot of uh, will to develop careers and stuff, but not... There was something missing here. So um, um, th this was a little bit, um, th there was something where, where we developed this context to, to make the people for the music for the ones who didn't make it somehow, and which often were very talented people. And um, as electronic music is produced on computers and in kind of offices, there's it's, it, it can happen that, that it's the more ambitious and the more professional that, um, that gains uh, a lot of uh, success or something. But it's a little bit sad because in the music you, you, s you, you hear it. It's music done in an office and it sounds cold. It doesn't have like the, the same necessity or the same strength that some revolutionary music ideas can have. So um, Lost was a little bit opposing to that. And what kind of music did you play there then? Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we, we started playing all we like. We had our, our references in, in many different things. And this, um, I think, uh, what we're doing today, also with Common Man, uh, it's like an extension of that. It's like the uh, putting them, developing that further and further. So. So um, the idea of not um, uh, belonging to a genre, n of, not, um, of not playing only one kind of music I in one night, but, but to create like one feeling that goes through all the night, to develop this, this magic and m somehow. And, um, and um, yeah, and to, and to avoid the, the standards, to avoid uh, the... Um, to avoid the genres, to avoid that someone can say this is this or this is that, because this is where where it starts to get boring. I think the most in, in, in uh, the, the when I started to listen to electronic music, the the most the deepest impact for me was the fact that suddenly a lot of different music could stand together and could play together, be played together, and suddenly make a totally different sense. And then one would go to hear stuff that nobody knows. And and stuff like that. So this was the initial points, and I think uh, in that way nothing has changed a lot. Um, we we are still looking for that. I think in the context of people um, I'm doing music with, I guess. And was that also something that happened to Compact? That it all of a sudden was this genre, and people were placing it into one corner. No, I don't know. I think that that is not my position to um, to judge these things in in that way to make like an analysis of what these or other people are doing. And I also think that for an artist it's important to not fall into this um, evil things of uh, um, having to contextualize yourself and to explain yourself. But <laughs> or explain um, or relate to musical movements or, or something in that way. But you also left Cologne, right? Yes, I, I left Cologne. Um, I went uh, first um, uh, to Buenos Aires because um, we went, um, I was starting to, to go back and forth between Cologne and Buenos Aires, and then I was a lot in Buenos Aires, where um, in, in uh, uh, together with um, some people there, we started to create like free um, spaces of uh, creation, in a way that we called Juventud Clandestina, involved were um, a lot What's of that in English, maybe? Juventud Clandestina. Juventud is youth and clandestina is cl clandestine? Yeah, clandestine youth then. So it was uh, open spaces where we uh, worked with some artists and musicians 
involved involved were many people of, of Buenos Aires, but also some from Cologne. Christian also came to these things, but um, we had um, Saga Chesney, and who was doing the artwork for Closer Music. We had uh, Fernanda Laguna, Gabriela Becherman, Gary Pimiento, Pablo Castoldi, a lot of people from the Buenos Aires art and music scene and so on and 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 we were doing this these parties and these things and this was going a little bit because i don't know when when i got there to buenos aires the first time um um with Dirk, it was like um um there was some some idea in common some feeling in common and for me it, it felt uh, in a way like home because um um they were very related to what we were doing in Cologne, and on the other hand, I had the South American background, so it fitted very well at that moment. So um, I st stayed there for some time, but then I went back to Cologne, and uh, then I went back there again, and then I was living some time between Paris and Buenos Aires, so um, yeah. <laughs> and all of this gave you another creative push in your music? Or yeah, I think, yeah, of course. Um, I think um I'm not I don't I don't like so much the idea of of searching for solutions in in music creation but more the idea of creating conditions under which one uh finds solutions. So um for instance the the street parties we did in Buenos Aires later on that's f for me a very good example of this uh in the um, we did the parties free on the street, and then suddenly we had to um, um, we had to deal with an audience that is completely different to the audience that one normally knows, because in the clubs it's a very standardized audience. It's a specific age, maybe it's even a specific social class. It's a specific people who have specific interests. So, so you're talking to someone who is who is like maybe taking part of 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 a certain discussion or in 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 a certain context whereas when you are on the street you're playing your music to people who have no idea what they will listen to and so on and so this musically um is a very inspiring process because it opens you you have to suddenly speak another language because um this this very club oriented language or, or very like mm, the, the like something that a discussion that takes on within like a certain specific scene of a genre or something is something that people who stand outside cannot really understand and suddenly you have like this some kids some friends some old people and you somehow want to make them dance and that's that's um that's a challenge so what did a lot you of fun what did you do to make them dance um yeah we realized um that uh, you had to develop skills like uh, as a dj you had develop skills in in the clubs no you you start learning how you, how you make people dance or uh, what music you can play at what moment and also like the relationship to the sound system and you hear to stuff you listen to stuff and you realize oh this will this is going to work very good in a club so we had to develop like the same skills for these parties and um and then we realized that it needed more melodies it needed more percussion it needed more um change changes of rhythm it couldn't be like uh, for two hours, of course, because uh, people would leave. So, um, um, so th th this uh, I always try to try to create situations um, that uh, somehow inspire the music. Because I think you can't put so much into music by yourself. Because music is such a big language, and it's so it has so much more story than you. Uh, that it will tell more about yourself than than it will than it will really reflect your intentions, because I mean, I don't know if you're really like this musician office worker and try to do really crazy stuff, it won't sound very crazy if you are not really a crazy person, because music talks more about you than what you want to put into the music, I guess, I think. And did you you were talking about more melody? More percussions, uh, rhythm changes. That's also what you're doing with Komema, right? In yeah, of course. This was very inspiring also for that musical process because we suddenly realized, okay, we were playing all this music on the street, but we suddenly realized, okay, we're playing like 
like cumbia songs and we're playing like reggaeton and we're playing like old house music and we're playing some old techno tunes but there was not really like a reference in in what we were doing as musicians ourselves so we started to do also the music for these parties and um, in that process of music making the the ones who who, who started there was uh, Rebolledo who was playing here yesterday also and um, and um, and Diego's uh, especially and um, yeah and and yeah you can hear it uh, obviously in, in the result. And what does Komeme mean? Komeme means the the the, 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 the it, it's the stress it's on O Komeme uh, means um, if I translate it directly it means eat me. Um, but it's it's obviously um, a little bit of um, yeah nasty thing to say i don't know it's like <laughs> um yeah it's like um uh give it to me or something like that yeah and do you have something from yeah of course um maybe i i play um one of the already classics <laughs> no where is it damn where's the uh okay here um i will play um by Rebolledo, with um, me featuring on the vocals, um, the track called uh, Pitaya Frenesi. Um, the thing is that, um, why do I not? <laughs> ah, here it is. Okay. One example of Komeme, and here goes another one that's um, Diego's Osea. Hello. So I will go quickly through. Thank you. 
some other examples of common man rhythms like uh, pata pata. That's a rhythm that I did together with Lerato Kati. <laughs> So that is Lerato. And okay, last example for, for getting like a little bit of an overview of Komeme, I will play uh, Mugre by young Anna Helder, who is also participating here. <laughs> Okay, so an applause for Anna. So as you see, um, um, it, it is reflected somehow also like in this directness of the music and and um, and, and not so much the idea of, of of the author like being in his thing, not not so much this introspective thing, but 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 something that is really to share. Anna's track sounded like a Czech track from Chicago a little bit, right? Um, yeah, I think there is also a lot of inspirations in, 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 in a lot of music that, that we have heard in that context. And, uh, and often it's music that is um, uh, maybe not uh, the most uh, modern because, um, or well, I don't know. But yeah, I think th for sure there is a reference in, in old house music, yeah. And you took the parties also outside of Buenos Aires on yeah the road, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, 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 we did them a lot. We did them in Buenos Aires. We did one in Asunción, in Paraguay, in Santiago. We did several. We did them in Medellín, Colombia. And um, we also did two in, in Europe, or three. Yeah. And is this also where you find artists for the label? Um, By in all well, most cities? of the artists of, of the label, it's, 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 it's a very complex thing how they appeared. Because some are like old friends, and, and in the Boom Boom Box context, or like uh, um, the DJs like Christian S, Korkut Elbai, or everybody who was contributing. There was not only people from South America, but also all the people from Cologne. So it's... Um, it's a and, and, and some people, for instance, uh, Rebolledo, I got to know during my travel travels through Mexico. And um, uh, Diego, I got to know when I, when I went uh, to Chile also for a musical exchange project. Um, this is also like s six years ago or something. And um, well, the Cologne people I knew since ages. And um, Anna, for instance, was, was uh, completely different. That was at the times where we were like very still, very active in MySpace. That nowadays we, 
I don't know, I'm not, I'm not using that anymore so much. But uh, when we started the label, um, and this is maybe interesting to tell, um, we didn't really exist as a label. There was not really the idea that we would release vinyl or whatever, or that we would sell our music. So we just pretended as if there is a label and put that on MySpace. And, and we filmed and we made like small movies of, um, of records turning, as you can find them in, um, in uh, the internet, in YouTube, um, where we filmed records that, we that re didn't really exist. So we pretended as if this label exists already and there's all these records. And then suddenly we got all these requests, where can I buy that vinyl? Or is that on seven inch, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, then um, when we got this request, uh, we realized, okay, let's, let's put them out for real. So this is an, an interesting moment. And also, um, well, in the example of, of Anna Helda and how we got uh, to know her, it was more because she was like one of the the followers of the label from the beginning on the on the page and we were a little bit investigating what music are these people doing and there was like one track um, that uh, Rebolledo and me uh, liked a lot and then we wrote to Anna and that's wha how, for, for example, she uh, uh, came into this thing. In other cases it's like um, also, like some musician brings in a friend, like, oh, I've done this collaboration with this guy. In the case of Rebolledo and Daniel Maloso, so suddenly Daniel Maloso appears, stuff like that. Yeah. And do you get a lot of strange demos as well by people who wouldn't fit at all? Yes, and of course. And they and still send it. Yeah, yeah, and we we get demos that have really nothing to do with what you do. But I think I have the impression some people send demos to fifty labels, and I don't know. Some of them do, for sure. And um, did you travel with a sound system then through all these places, like a reggae yeah, sound had system would no do? No, no, no. It is a little bit smaller sound system than a reggae sound system because the idea was always to do doing the parties in the middle of um, of a city, so you can't really just show up with like a huge. It was a, a system um, made by a lot of boomboxes put all together, and. Um, but um, what we did is um, I organized these tours um, with um, the common artists through Europe, two of them, and um, or three. And um, that was something we did. But that was more going from, from venue to venue, where we also tried not to have only the club, because we s it's, it's not that I don't like the clubs. I love the clubs. But also like to to play in in spaces that are a little bit alternative yeah and in those public spaces you never got into trouble with authorities of or the course police? yeah of course we got into trouble but that's also a little bit part of the fun because um or, or it's also a little bit like the um because you test something you test um a little bit uh, how much liber uh, freedom you got for real because if you if you if you are dancing on the street, once you're doing that, you, I mean, it's normal. It sh should be like um, part of the human rights, no? But you realize that it's not. So this is an interesting moment in life to realize that. <laughs> no, but also it's like from city to city is very different. For instance, in um, in Buenos Aires, um, we didn't have much trouble in the beginning with that because um, also the format is very weird. So there, there's two policemen. They go down the road and there's suddenly 50 people dancing on a street corner. What shall they do? It's like, is this legal? Is it not? It's not really something that... In um, in Chile, it's uh, it was a bit little bit more hardcore. There was like... Um, um, yeah, but after us dancing for four hours, so it was okay. Uh, there was the police coming with, um, with motorbikes and everything and they kicked us out of the place, but... Um, yeah, it's different. It's changes. I think in you couldn't do this in London, probably. In London, we would last for ten seconds or something. But you, you have, you never ended up in prison. No. <laughs> no. So you, you and get fined? Do no. They nothing. No. They just want you to stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine then. And um, it's fine not to be fined. And um, you, you spoke of freedom. Do you also need the freedom of, tr like, 
traveling and living in certain places to make music these days? Or can you see yourself staying in one place for 10 years? You have quite a nomadic lifestyle. I am I, kind of forced to have having a nomadic lifestyle. I sometimes wish I would stay for 10 years in one place, of course. But... Um, yeah, it's for me. It's a little bit difficult, as I, and I think uh, we we people who are exiled Chileans <laughs> and, um, and people with a migration background have always a little bit this problem. You were born somewhere, you grow up somewhere else, but you still have your family where you was born, and then you go back, and when you're there, you miss your friends in in Germany. When you're in Germany, you first miss your friends in South America, and so in the end, it's just. Um, it's just the fate. I can't do anything. I will just I have to travel because if I stay here, I I will be missing something there and the other way around. So my situation is a little bit weird, but um, doing something like Komeme or doing these collaborations with all these musicians also beyond Komeme um, um, is for me a possibility to, to keep it in... No, I, I brought the South American friends to, to Cologne, and now my Cologne friends are friends of the people from Chile or Argentina. And, um, and uh, this is a way of, of keeping a balance, in a way, and, and feeling home at both places. I don't know. And do you also feel like a little bit of a father figure for all of this? Because you were like the guy that started the label and you have all these people around you and you travel with them oh and no, no, no. you I have to take <laughs> responsibility ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um yeah responsibility is something something very difficult to take yeah i can't say so much about it but it's um it's yeah it's a huge kindergarten of a lot of people you have to take from one place to another and it's a lot of fun and also you get back a lot of energy from it, so, yeah. And there's also another episode in your life uh, that has something to do with your record collection, with, as for some people, maybe the, don't don't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the worst nightmare ever. <laughs> do you yeah, um... So he was talking about um, that once my flat burned down while I was not there, and I lost all my records. <laughs> and you started to buy them all again? Or how did you... No, that was impossible there? because most of these records don't exist anymore. No, I think it was not so... Um, I think the imagination of that happening to you is much worse than if it really happens to you. And I think that... Um, mm, being... I don't know having a um, heartache or something is much worse than a flat burning down or something. Because w once the stuff was not there anymore and I just had like this bag, um, it was also cool because it was a, a good way of being, being able also to travel so much without having so much weight. And I had like this room full of records and full of stuff and full of memories that also be can become a weight. And and it was so messy. I would never have achieved to clean it up really like to... So it was okay. It was not, not so dramatic. But um, it was also an impulse for making music, for, d for doing things, because some records I didn't find. I tried to remember how they were, and I did something similar. So, yeah. I think um, every situation in life, you have to try to turn it into, into an inspiration somehow, I guess. So it rather freed you up then? Yes, of down. course, yeah. And um, yeah, maybe we should listen to one of your other recent tracks. Mm -hmm. The most recent thing, maybe? The most recent thing. The most recent thing is obviously unreleased. But um, yeah, that's. Ah, I can. Um, nice. ah, yeah, that, that's fun. I, I will play just a few rhythms uh, for you. Unreleased rhythms. Just. Um, to explain a little bit a uh, way of working, because sometimes I um, I just um, uh, do the rhythms and then I improvise on top. I, I when I DJ I um, I um, 
I I sometimes have drum pads and I have like this this um, effect thing to to loop my voice and stuff like that. So I often bring just I I just play rhythms and then I sing on top and while playing and and from gig to gig I try to develop something and um, and and this is why I d how I develop some ideas. So I will just play. It's just loops, no? It's just rhythms that I will play. Um, so you get an an idea. And I'm playing these things and then I improvise. So for instance, I would play this and then sing something on top, play some percussion on top, or maybe some some keyboard sometimes when I have it with me. Um, but this is just one idea, for instance. So actually what I did now, because I'm traveling again to um, South America um, the day after tomorrow, and I will tour there a lot, and so I'm, I've been spending the last weeks in mixing down all these rhythms so I can play them, and during, during I do all these gigs and the traveling, I hope to find uh, solutions for them to sing on top, to whatever. I, 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 I sometimes find that the situation of playing is, is, m is more um, helpful for me uh, to develop an idea than the situation of sitting in the studio at home. <laughs> Just quickly through some other rhythms. So this just to give you a few examples of uh, what I'm working on. So thank you. So so these days you basically have to work on the road. Yes, I'm I'm kind of forced to because I'm I'm, I'm on a steady touring at the moment, but I also hope to be able somehow to create the situation that that I can stay at some place for some time. Do you still have a studio? Yes, space? I have a studio. Yeah, yeah. And how often are you there? Um, now I was quite often there because I was finishing all, all, all of this stuff. So to I just mix it just down. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And maybe mm. we should open it up for a few questions. From yes, of course. The audience. Just wait for the microphone. Hello. Hello. Um, so you say uh, that uh, you think you're more of a, of a singer, and that's how you find your ideas. You know, it's easier for you to uh, sing them. Uh, the most frustrating thing is like when, for example, you walk on the screen and you have this idea, and uh, 
you like five minutes later you forgot it and you're like uh, I had it you know and uh, I don't know if it's happened to you or uh, or if you managed to uh, uh, remember them and uh, if you n if you don't uh, I uh, how do you write them down you know how do you collect all your ideas basically um Okay, on the one hand, I think I have a quite good memory for these ideas, but I think some g some get lost also. Um, uh, I, I record a lot. I record a lot with a microphone. Um, or also, when I'm traveling, I have like, um, uh, well, I'm not, I don't have it here now, but like a small recording device. Um, I mean, f nowadays you can even, no, you can record on your phone or whatever. But uh, to not forget the stuff, um, it's cool to have something. If you are, well, if you are able to write n sheets, notes, and stuff, then then maybe you can do that. But uh, and uh, do you think the really good ideas you won't forget them, or do you think you have uh, to catch them? Uh, be no, I'm I'm not afraid of losing them. I think they they they, I I don't know. I think I like have a trust in music somehow that um, it will speak itself somehow. So. No, not really. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, what was it like to create with uh, battles like the band? Ah, okay, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was a very new experience for me. Obviously, the music they do is has nothing to do with uh, what I would do normally. So at some point, they they had like this idea of of, of bringing in different. Uh, singers into uh, their album and um, yeah it was a lot of fun I also because I, I got the opportunity to play with them and uh, for me it was uh, a very nice experience to play with such skilled musicians on a stage it's really um, um, yeah it was interesting it was interesting also because um, I didn't know their music at all and then suddenly I had this song and I had to figure out something about it and uh, um i w i did something that i thought oh they maybe find this a little bit too crazy but then they got back to me and they really liked it and said oh, we want it even a little bit more crazy and so yeah no it was it was a lot of fun yeah it's 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 um very 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 good musicians and very nice people yeah do you have it with you that <laughs> no unfortunately no. not no we should have thought about that we one, didn't yeah. think about <laughs> the battles so that's that's a song called the Ice Cream by Battles for anyone who wants to do some research afterwards. Hi. Um f well I, I have the well like the popular music we usually listen to like jazz, pop, electronic usually comes from countries like the United States um, or UK maybe Germany when we talk about more electronic. But um you find your way to mix that with your roots and your original, um, the music that you might heard mm -hmm. when you were a kid and how you feel about rhythms. Mm -hmm. Was it hard in the beginning to, like, it feels like a really authentic thing mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like that with s when some other maybe Latin artist is trying to do music that was originally developed mm -hmm. in a different culture and I just wonder if when you were starting, it was something that you were con conscious of or just happened? Mm. Um, I, I try to avoid like this this conceptual or conscious thing of, of mixing styles or whatever. I think um, the most honest way is just to make music and then in the result you will hear the influences, of course. But um, I never liked the idea of fusion, like of saying, okay, I will do uh, tango music, but with electronic beats or something like that. That I've never found like an interesting approach or something. And and I think it is uh, more a natural result of, of, of having spent a lot of time there, of having the background, of uh, having traveled through there, that automatically, I would never sit down and 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 say I will do a cumbia song because first of all I can't do it because uh, it's other people who, who who know how to do it for real, but it can happen that I do a track and then afterwards I listen to it and notice oh uh, I can hear a little bit of that influence I've been listening to Andres Landero record in around that time and oh okay you 
you can hear it. But uh, I would always try to to avoid like uh, conceptual thing there, and I don't I don't like the idea so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, yesterday you finished your DJ set singing the minimal, your minimal track. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about the track and okay. uh, the impact? Yeah, um, the track, um, um, this track is called uh, Minimal and it was a little bit of, um, I, I can mayb maybe play just a little bit of it? Yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. So, uh, because I don't I'm, not I'm sure that not everybody knows it. Um, and um, it's... Um, yeah, it, it's actually a very silly song where, where we... Um, I know it's not here, it's here. It's on the CD. Wait. Uh, where is it? It's the first one. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's, non, it's the last one, I guess. Yeah. So this is actually a song that I recorded with a friend. We were making really fun, actually, at home, and we were sing singing this song, or I was singing this song... Um, uh, where I was complaining about the dullness of uh, minimal techno and singing that uh, I want to dance to another rhythm that is more deep and more um, sensual Sexy. and more whatever. So, and um, yeah, I think some people took it maybe like a political statement, uh, but it's not so serious. <laughs> Yeah, and we made this song, and it had some somehow um, uh, an impact. I think uh, more famous than this version is is the remix that um, it's a little bit did more. You, did you choose the DJ Cozy for a mix, or was the label? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it was like an idea in common or something. I, I don't remember. Did you like the result of the remix? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, it's not so much my style. I prefer this version, of course. Uh, this. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. And now, then, now and then, people uh, like yesterday, uh, there was a lot of people asking me if I can play that song and if I can play that song. I was like, I've I've played it very often, and um, I don't like to play it so much anymore. But on the other hand, I also think you're doing this for the people on the dance floor. You're not doing this for yourself. So if they really want it, then. And yeah, okay, I will sing it, <laughs> but uh, it's fun also. Then then I sing it in another version, or I sing it a cappella, or sing it on another rhythm. Then, but I think um, if people ask for it, then then it's a nice gesture to give it. Yeah, I don't know. And you you Thank mentioned you. like uh, it was taken as a political statement by a lot of people. Is, is that something you're interested in with no, your music to make a political no, statement no. from time to time? I think a political statement can be interested in interesting in the way you work. No, um, uh, how do you distribute your music or how how you relate uh, with music? The the idea of doing doing parties on the street is also a political statement in a way, but within like like doing as it's n and come on and like doing like minimal is because it was really re we, we did this track and then it came out and there was like huge um stuff on how it is called this forums forums i think forums yeah, yeah. or where facebook where even like sometimes. people discussing about uh, things and i think uh, a musician shouldn't waste time with that um 
I, I find it really funny that people can find so much time discussing about uh, whether there was people saying that it's really serious, then others that making fun, and I don't know. <laughs> so this this is quite funny, actually. <laughs> but that's the best thing you can achieve, right? To have like all kinds of different opinions on your work without putting them into one direction. Like don't have this black and white thing. Mm. But yeah, maybe. <laughs> And there was another one, right? Hey, man. Uh, when a lot of times when I hear your music, uh, I can imagine you performing with a live band, maybe. Like there's a there's a live feel to it. Uh, is that something that interests you, or do you think you prefer to just DJ and kind of do your own thing over your DJ sets? Like maybe working with a live band might be a pain in the ass, or would you be into that one day? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I've even tried. We, we, we did, like, a kind of band outfit the last year, but was not really, like, like a band. I had, like, two musicians with me. That was not so much of a band, but I'm really thinking of it and also, like, how to do it, because obviously it's... I, I don't think the solution would be like going to the bass, drums, guitar, cymbal, but but uh, how to? Yeah, I think it definitely makes sense. It's only difficult sometimes as a musician to organize your time, no? Because um, doing a label, uh, releasing records, playing in clubs, and doing all the administration for that takes so much time that that sometimes it's very difficult to organize yourself that you can really seriously put a band together, rehearse and stuff like that. I hope I will achieve it somehow. I think I will. But um, the, um, also we did like small we did like a little tour with Diego Morales and Filip Gorbachev uh, through Poland um, where uh, Diego was playing bass and, and Filip was playing the drums and I was playing some beats and singing and so we were playing each other's tracks. So this was already an approach to it. But um, um, yeah, it's not ready yet, but I'm, I'm thinking a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, hi, it's hi. interesting what you said about the fire burning down all your records because I've been with this guy in the exact same situation of his records were gone and my guitar too and then we started to make music afterwards just saying, but I had a question since you consider yourself a singer do you have, do you have any favorite ones? Like favorite singers? Yes Oof uh, what do you listen to? Oh, I listen to a lot of music. It's um, mm. it's maybe difficult to to uh, where to start with. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, considering a singer that I like a lot, um, well, <laughs> I could spontaneously think of Arthur Russell because of the fact that um, of this playful approach to music. And um, okay, he, he played many instruments, but um, also still I consider him in a singer and, and how he developed the thing. So th that's someone I like a lot. And um, phew, um, I, d I don't know. I don't know. I would have to think. Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Hey, um, I feel like a lot of your music comes from improvisation, like uh, DJing and also live. I'm just wondering how much does sequencing come into your um, into play in when you're creating? Because sequencing, yeah. Like, um, like, do you edit a lot, or you kind of try to leave it like? Ah, uh, okay. Um, <coughs> like sequencing in the sense, like you you mean this left to the right thing where <laughs> arrangements yeah. and stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I try to, um, obviously I work with sequences because I make electronic music, I program beats and stuff, and, um, when, but when I record it, I, uh, I obviously try more to, to record a lot of takes mm -hmm. and, um, and then choose the best one and maybe, May maybe edit it a little bit if I notice, okay, this part is not so good. Then, but because it's much more fun for me. First, it's it's uh, it's more fun because um, 
you sing, you improvise, you play, and that's more fun than being on the screen and moving something to the left and then moving mm -hmm. it to the right and stuff. So it's more fun. And also I think for, for you as a musician, it's better, you learn more, because um, singing all in one take perfectly is, um, is, is much more of an achievement than recording three takes and then assembling together what sounds, sounds best. Um, and also, I'm a little bit uh, used to it because of when, 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 when um, this example of closer music, we did have no hard disk recording system or something where we could have been editing, so we had to, to record all in one take, which meant that we recorded the song 25 times, or I don't know, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I always would prefer that, and I always uh, have tried to, to, to find the, the perfect take rather than than being too much on the screen. Also, I think um, for me, working too much on the screen is a bit of a problem because you're arranging something and it goes from the left to the right, like this. And I think music doesn't work like that. Music doesn't go from the left to the right and, and go like this. And then it's, um, it's a visual translation of it that, that I think can be of a negative impact on your musical process somehow. Or at least for me, it's like that. Hi. Uh, let's speak about um, your roots, because uh, you mentioned the cumbia and the reggaeton, mm -hmm. and maybe what else uh, South American or world uh, music are you influenced by? Maybe you could name or maybe sing some rhythms mm -hmm. or some melodical structure. Yeah, um, the thing is that uh, it's obviously m much more complex. So if I talk about South America, I, can I don't, don't necessarily talk only about um, the the rhythms one would associate directly with it like cumbia salsa whatever but i also can talk about rock music and i can talk about beat because i mean there's a long beat and rock tradition also in south america so it's it's very complex and um and for me it's always difficult to um to somehow talk about about these rhythms in the sense that um this name dropping of genres is for me a big problem because it somehow is what, what made music a little bit more superficial, I think, because then at some point we're not talking about music anymore, we're talking about musical elements. Some su Suddenly something that goes, it's house, and something that goes tick tack tick 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 tack is minimal, and so this is not really something, but considering to your question, uh, the, the question like like the, the Latin roots. There is um, there is um, obviously um, a big impact had on me the cumbia, but well, on the one hand, because it's what what was heard at ho at home, like no, like or in the family party, whatever. It comes from Colombia, but it spread throughout the the whole Latin American um, universe, except Brazil, of course. That's um, always a special thing. And, um, but it had an impact uh, on me again when I was going to Mexico, because in Mexico there's this huge cumbia sound systems that exist since a long, long time. And I got to know the, um, the, the DJs there and, and the people who, who, who work in this movement. And, and then the, the, the thing I realized when I saw, for example, La Changa play, I played with La Changa, who is like, uh, legendary um, cumbia sound system guy who plays since 40 years and I was assisting him so I was you know, like the DJ there has an assistant who helps to equalize and, and put the delay and stuff because it's like DJ MC what he does and um, then I realized that it's in the end um, it's it's very similar to what we do in the clubs and to 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 the moment um, how can we make people dance how do we relate to the dance floor and the conversations that DJs had were practically the same than than we DJs had in, in from coming from another music context so um, so I I rather try to search for the things in common uh, than than really um, seeing it in a separated way of this is that and this is this. And the influences are so many that one could start 
I don't know where to start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks anyway. <laughs> Any more? Okay. Then So thank you very much. <laughs> um, thank you very much.